I don't know where that reprieve from the heat is that they've been telling us we were going to have today, but uh, hopefully it'll show up before the day is over. Meanwhile, we have air conditioning, and that's a good thing. And by the way, for any of you that may be wondering, the church is not for sale. I don't know. You know, people are just so... I just said audacious, but I actually I could come up with a better word, but <laughs> just stick a for sale sign in your yard and yeah. praise the Lord, you know. So anyway, it's it's out there. I'm not going to make a big deal out of it other than just rant to you guys for a little bit, but I just don't understand for some people, praise the Lord. <laughs> no, that's the more disturbing part of it. Well, actually, somebody just stuck a for sale sign on the corner of our lot for their house down the street somewhere. And I suppose, I don't know, you know, you can't read, I don't know, well, maybe you can, but you can't read anything but the for sale. It's just, you know, the, the address is just in little tiny numbers underneath of it, so I'm guessing people are driving by thinking, oh, that church is for sale, what do you think? <laughs> okay, so I've forgiven them and we've moved on, praise the Lord, it's all good now. Hallelujah. Well, how's life? Good. Praise the Lord. You can see I haven't done this for a while. The wheels are rolling. Praise God. Amen. Well, what do we got for announcements? There's number one. Go to vibrate or turn on. This Friday is the Iowa Vision. It's a concert, I guess, huh? I can share that Sarah and Suzanne are first clear of anything. Okay. Bill Johnson, if you ever heard of him. Anyway, that's the the, uh, the worship. So, so young people, adults, old people, everybody in between, anybody that wants to go, get together, and uh, check with Suzanne and and uh, Sarah, and make if it happen. We can, if you can put on the Okay. That would be perfect. Okay, so get on Facebook, or if you don't have uh, Suzanne's number, get it, and you can text her, or, and uh, we'll go from there. Okay? All right. Praise the Lord. What else? Roberto is uh, holding this financial piece abundant at the Abundant Life Church here, and it's going to be Monday at Mondays at 6 p.m. Or what does it go, six weeks? Nine. Nine weeks? Yeah. And it starts August 7th. Get with Roberto if you want to schedule. Uh, if you're having a little problem with the uh, the financial end of this, getting into it for the textbook and so forth, there's help available for that. So you can check with me or check with Suzanne or, or uh, Sarah on that as well. And just let us know uh, if you uh, have a need, if you feel like you really want to be involved in this and, and, and get some good teaching on financial uh, stability and growth and so forth, uh, let them know. And through them and myself and whoever else is willing, we'll, we'll make uh, some funds available for those who absolutely can't get it themselves. So anyway, get, check with them, Roberto, uh, 
Suzanne, myself, whatever, and we'll, yes, Suzanne. Right, so it's each individual within the family doesn't have to have their own workbooks and notebooks and so forth. So one per family. Anyway, we'll get with them, check it out. We've got it uh, August 7th. That's what, a week from? Two weeks, two weeks from Monday. So be thinking about it, praying about it. If you, you know, if everything is wonderful in your financial part of the world, call me. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But otherwise, this might be a good thing to, to check out, okay? Hey, what's next? The Lord. He's the door. Truth, the life, and the way. Praise the Lord. All right, prayer requests. Yes, please. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Anybody else have something they want to share or a prayer request? Alvin? Uh, yeah, Brother Bob would, would uh, appreciate uh, a little deliverance. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Remember Deborah? Anyone else? Yes, James? We'll be praying for you to have a successful event and a safe and uh, good trip going and coming. Praise the Lord. Anybody else? Tim.
Yes, praise the Lord. Every time the Lord would approach somebody or someone would approach him, whether it was about healing. In fact, I, uh, when, when the disciples were uh, talking to the Lord, I, Jesus said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. After Peter had had this great revelation that he was the, the Lord, that he was Christ, God in the flesh, uh, Peter then says, I'm not going to let anybody do this stuff to you. And Jesus immediately turns to him and says, get thee behind me, Satan. Later on, Peter says to Jesus, uh, I'll, never, I'll never leave you. I'll, I'll, I'll stick by you no matter what happens. I got your back. And Jesus said, Peter, before the cock crows three times, or before the cock crows, you'll deny me three times today. And what's really good about that is the very next thing he says, fear not. You believe in God, believe also in me. If you remember, there's no, no chapters and verses. This was just a continuous writing. That's the Bible. That's what the Bible is. It wasn't until centuries later that they decided to divide this stuff all up in the way that they would understand it. But Jesus flows immediately from, you're going to deny me three times. You're going to rat me out, you know. And yet, he says, but fear not. You believe in God, believe also in me. Praise the Lord. So... That's always the first things out of God's mouth, no matter what it is we're facing. If you can hear the spirit, it's always, don't be afraid. If you believe in me, you can believe in Jesus, who has already defeated these situations and circumstances that we're all confronted with. So praise the Lord. Don't be afraid. Perfect love casts out fear. Amen. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it's just a complete thing. And I think that, uh, I mean, he's given me words of knowing who we are, believing in him, given Nathan over and over. And it's like, we need to just get a good grasp on this thing. He is, he's given us all kinds of different teachings. And, and once we discover that, it's going to break heaven. Yeah, oh, yeah. amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. He's the answer. Whatever the question, whatever the situation, he is the answer. Amen. Yes, uh, Mike. Amen. Amen. Anybody else? Sarah? Morning. Praise the Lord.
Yeah, amen. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. We'll pray with you about that for sure. Eric. Yes, I'll be sure to class and stuff. A few people talk about distraction. I know Sheila did. And some of us have something to do with it. I think it was about a week or two ago, just when we were either watching the news in the shack, I'm sure some of you saw it too. Um, the, the part that really uh, stuck out to me was without not saying the whole movie, at one point uh, the character of Jesus had to, uh, they had to cross the lake. So him and the main character, they ended up walking across the lake with Jesus because uh, he trusted in Jesus. And then he had to go to the uh, temple to get wisdom. Anyway, you know, and then he comes out, you know, and he felt good about it and everything like that. And I, like I said, I know this is ridiculous for me, is, okay, he, he, he feels good. He was talking to wisdom and he went through all this. And then, you know, him and Jesus have to go back and cross the, the lake again. And, you know, the guy's feeling good with it. What's he start doing? He just starts trucking right into the water, and of course he's not walking on the water. And he looks back, like, come on. And, you know, Jesus says, it would be a lot better if we did it together. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I yeah. think that really you know, sticks with me every day is that, you know, you've got to sometimes stop and think, man, it's a lot easier if we do it together. Yeah. Yeah, it's a yeah. good word, Eric. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Anybody else? Tammy. Sorry, my peripheral vision is not that good. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. There's no one else. Let's stand and go to the Lord in prayer. And we had a lengthy kind of prayer request and testimonies, which often happens. But So you may have forgotten some of the prayer requests, but God has it. So it isn't a question of us reciting these back to God. It's a question of us believing him 
for every word that was spoken, for every need that was mentioned. And in some of these cases, there are underlying needs that are greater than the ones that we even talked about. And that's what God really wants to, to attack, to deal with, is the, the, the source of the problem, the, the, the core problem that is creating other issues here. So we know the, the devil is defeated. We know that if we pray according to the will of God, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, then we know that we have our petition. So this is a done deal. We ought to be just celebrating as we lift up our uh, voices to the Lord and release our faith in him and in the finished work. We can celebrate. We have the answer. The request is granted. Praise the Lord. So, Father, we just come before you right now with great confidence, not in our prayers, not in our faith, but in you and the faith of Jesus Christ that has made it all possible. We just cast all of our cares onto you right now. We place our confidence in the unfailing, unbroken, unchanging word of God Almighty. Hallelujah. Your word is final, and we declare that final word here on earth concerning every one of these situations, every individual, and every circumstance. We rebuke the lies of the devil, and we release our faith in the power of Almighty God. Nothing is impossible, Lord. All things are possible if we believe. Lord, we believe. Help our unbelief. Show yourself mighty on our behalf. And we give you all the praise, the thanks, and the glory for the testimonies that will come as a result of this. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, praise the Lord. Amen. Give him a hand. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Toby, would you and uh, Roberto come take up the offering this morning? Praise the Lord. Roberto, if you would, just ask the Lord to. God bless you as you give. I want to thank uh, Tim for uh, taking the service on Wednesday night. Appreciate that very much. He always does a great job. Everybody that gets up here, God blesses and uses, and we appreciate that very much. I appreciate Tim taking it on short notice. I had a little uh, demonic activity. You know it's demonic when you got to go to the dentist's office, praise the Lord. There's nothing but pure hell, praise the Lord. But anyhow, it's all good in Jesus. Amen. So appreciate everybody being here this morning. Let's just really worship the Lord. Let him know how much we thank him for what he's already done, for what he's doing right now, and what he will continue to do in our lives. Amen.
say this, Jesus isn't done yet, praise the Lord. It's finished. It's finished, but it isn't done, praise the Lord. He has finished it, praise God. But there's still some work to be done. Hallelujah. The Lord gave me a word, and I just sat down because I wanted to wait to see if he confirmed it. I wanted to hear it. I stood here, and I said, Lord, we're No, you're not. The mustard seed mm. is the tiniest of herbs. Yeah. And he showed me immediately this church with this gigantic tree out of it. Huge. All the branches were everywhere. And he said, I'm going to do something that is so supernatural, you'll all know. And he said, proclaim it. You're not the one saying it. I'm saying it, saith the Lord, that yeah. I will do a supernatural that will split this city, this country, and this world open, and it will start right here. Thank you, Jesus. Let's, let's just receive it right now in Jesus' name. Lord, we agree. Hallelujah. We receive your word. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, let it be even as you have spoken. Be unto us, Lord, even as you have spoken. Glory to God. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. To be, you be all the glory. Praise God. Amen, amen. I think sometimes that's a good word. Thank you, Jesus. I think sometimes God delays, not because God doesn't want it to happen, but because when it happens, there'll be no question in our minds where it came from. It won't be because of some perfect message that was preached. It won't be because we had perfect worship, which we have. Amen. Worship is fantastic in this church, but it'll be, everyone will say, that was the Lord. Because we had a lot of those services where everything seemed to be going really good and it was a good thing and it was, it was about the Lord. But all of a sudden God moves and everything changes. Praise the Lord. Amen. So I'm looking forward to it. Praise the Lord. I believe it in Jesus' name. Suzanne.
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. I, I think it would be good for us to give him everything because he's got a lot more than we got. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Go ahead. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord another hand. Praise God. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. If, uh, if the Sunday school kids haven't already gone down, they can now. Yeah. Praise the Lord. I think most of them have already left, but yeah. praise the Lord. Yeah. Thank the Lord. Amen. Yeah. Well, I appreciate, too, uh, Jody ministering the word last week. How you thought? She did a good job, right? Praise the Lord. It was good. Amen. The Lord, amen, has given her some things, and, and she's going to be sharing again in the future. And I, I just appreciate people uh, being sensitive to the Lord and being willing to stand up and share it, how, whatever that format might be. You know, just if the Lord's speaking to you, you need to, you need to let us in on it. Hallelujah. That's why it's a body. Because no one of us gets everything. Hallelujah. It takes the group, amen, to bring the fullness of Christ uh, into our understanding and into our uh, revelation. Praise the Lord. So I'm going to talk to you about a few things this morning. Uh, Sally asked me last night. She said, what are you preaching? I said, I have no idea. It's going in every direction. <laughs> well, this will be normal then, won't it? Praise the Lord. But... Uh, I mean, you ever think about whatever happened to Barabbas? You know, there's nothing else in the Bible about, I, I know there's movies. Okay, but it's kind of like Noah, some of those movies, they're not really that accurate. So you can't, you don't want to be quoting Noah, the movie, uh, any more than, the, you know, some of the other movies that have Barabbas and so forth. But I, I you know, you think about it, what, what happened to him? What's the rest of his story? Well, he was guilty. Everybody knew he was guilty. He knew he was guilty. And he was set free at the expense of a totally, perfectly innocent person. Barabbas is us. And I think that intentionally was not finished, his story, because we finish it, each one of us. Say, well, I was I never killed anybody. Well, let's not even go there because we're all guilty. Amen. And an innocent one traded his life for ours. So Barabbas is us. And just like the continuation of the book of Acts, I think we write the rest of his story in each one of our lives. He's a metaphor for everybody. He, he's, he's a real person. He was a real person, but he's, he's a type of everybody. Of every human being. You know, you are the bride of Christ. And the scripture says you are without spot and without wrinkle. Yes. Now, if you're not the bride, then you've got no business using the, his name. And he tells us whatever we do, do it in his name. So we know, we know we're not going to be his bride. We're not waiting. We are the bride of Christ. We already are. We already have that inheritance. We already have that relationship. It's just a question of how we, how we move forward with that. So how, so how does God see you? Well, imagine, I'll just use Sally and I. So it's, our, it's not our anniversary. We already had it earlier this summer. 37 years. Yeah. Well, that was for her. That was for her. Uh, she needs to take a deep breath and a long vacation. But nevertheless, uh, imagine. So you take your wife out on your anniversary. Now we're the bride of Christ, right? And uh, and I and I say, who did your hair? You know that those pants make you look big. You know I spotted another wrinkle. Are you using makeup? 
And what in the name of God is that perfume you're wearing? Well, I can tell you that night is not going to be that great. There won't be a lot of intimacy. Things are not going to work out real well. Well, that's why the scripture says Jesus sees us without spot and without wrinkle. He sees us, his perfect, beautiful, pristine, gorgeous wife. And he gives us the gifts of the spirit as a wedding present. Now, I'll tell you this, and this has happened over the years because Sally and my tastes are not identical. They're not even in the same realm a lot of times. And I'll get her things, and I'm thinking, boy, this is, she's going to love this. And she'll look at it, and she'll be polite and kind, but I know that's going in a drawer that we'll never see daylight again, you know? And uh, so... The gifts that God gives us are to empower us, to bless us, to, to uh, expand our reality in this relationship with him. Okay, so now that being said, let's look at, I want to look at one scripture here, Roberto, if you would. James chapter 1, and I want to read verses 23 and 24. James 1, 23 and 24. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer. Now, keep that in your mind because this is going to be important as we move on here. We, a lot of times we look at that, and from a religious perspective, most of us came from a background, or a lot of us came from a background at least, where, where we'd say, well, yeah, you heard it, but you're not doing it. You're not being obedient. You're not keeping the, letter of the law. You know, you're not doing everything you're supposed to be doing. You still got a TV. I know that shocked some of you, but that actually is where some of us came from, praise the Lord. And uh, so I'm just saying, yeah, you hear it, but you're not doing it. Well, that, that is kind of the religious way that we, most of us grew up or, or, or related to this. But that's really not what's being said here, and I'll, I'll, we'll get into it a little bit more as we move on here. But For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself, and he goes his way, and straightway forgets what manner of man he was. So, a doer, a fulfiller of the word, or just a hearer of the word? Now, unless you make a, a, a concerted effort, or at least a, a, a careful study of what you are and who you are in Christ, when a crisis comes, when a problem comes, which we heard about already this morning, and thank God we're, we're responding biblically. Yeah. We're casting our care onto the Lord. We're trusting him. Amen. But unless you realize who you are in Christ, when this challenge comes or when the crisis comes or when the obstacle confronts you, you're going to forget what manner of man you are. And I'm using that gender neutral, okay? We're man. We are mankind, okay? And that's the way this is is speaking. The sense realm will just numb you spiritually. And you then will unconsciously revert to the to the path of least resistance. Which is you'll see yourself as you were, not as you are. You'll respond to the sense realm with the sense realm. You can't allow yourself to forget what manner of man he made you. God is at work in you. And the scripture says, willing and working his own good pleasure. Praise the Lord. The real you has been made in the image of God. You have his ability to meet the problems of the natural life. You have supernatural ability to deal with the natural junk that we face in this world. 
All right, 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14. Now, thanks be unto God, which always, everybody say always. Always, always causes us to triumph in Christ. Yes. That's what Eric was talking about. It's easier when you're right. doing it with him, right? Yes. So, causes us to triumph in Christ and maketh manifest the savor, the aroma, the, the awareness of his knowledge by us, by us in every place. Yes. Praise the Lord. So, Jesus conquered all of the forces of darkness, and he left them paralyzed. The scripture says it almost verbatim. He left them paralyzed. He left them broken. And all of that is as if we did it. It's set to our credit. Praise the Lord. Our minds have to become fruitful to that truth of what we are and of who we are in Christ. See, the battle is really over. Yes. I mean, we ought to be beating our plows or our, our, our swords into plowshares. Yeah. Amen? We ought to be beating our uh, spears into pruning hooks. Yeah. In other words, instead of fighting a, vic a battle that's already won, we ought to be operating from the victory of that battle, and we should then be using the weapons, amen, that, we, that Jesus used to defeat the enemy. We ought to beat them into things that we can now reap a harvest, amen, of the promises of God, pruning hooks, hallelujah, and, 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 uh, and that type of thing, rather than continuing to fight battles that are already won. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right, now, I'm not really going away from this, except maybe, I, maybe it'll seem that way. But in my mind, I'm, I'm still on point here. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I just hope somebody else is in my mind. Matthew 5, uh, verses 17 and 18. Matthew 5, verse 17 and 18. I was thinking about this as Jody was teaching and uh, preaching last Sunday. And it just kind of stayed with me all week long. So I'm going to read from Luke chapter 4 as well, which she quoted or, or, or read from uh, in her uh, message. But this is Matthew chapter 5, verse 17 and 18. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I'm not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Now, do, remember James 124. Not hearers only, but doers or fulfillers, okay? For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass away, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. These are the words of Jesus. Amen. Don't think that I've come to destroy the law or the prophets. I'm not come to destroy, but to fulfill. All right. Luke chapter 4, verses 18 through 21. Luke 4, 18 through 21. And this is Jesus, you know, He's telling everybody, look, I found myself in the Word of God. Yes. And this is what I'm supposed to be doing. So I'm going to do it, okay? The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. And he's qu actually quoting from Isaiah 61, but that's, he found himself. He found himself in the Word of God. Yes. It would be a good idea if we'd start doing that. Yes. Instead of reading it as a book about somebody else, yes. read it. It's a book about Jesus. We're in Christ, and most of this is referring yes. to us and what we are supposed to be and what we're supposed to do. Yes. Not in a legal legal way, but in a way of power and anointing. Yes. Amen. So the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, the recovery of sight to the blind, set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister and sat down and the eyes of them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him and he began to say unto them, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. Praise the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. All right. In order to understand understand the word fulfill and how it's used here in the scripture, you need to understand it in the context of the culture and the customs of the time, the Jewish perspective. Okay? So to us, we say, 
well, that's been fulfilled. To us, it's like saying, well, that's done now, right? It's, it's, it's over. Well, go back to, if you will, Roberto, back to Matthew 5, 17 and 18. Think not that I'm come to destroy the law or the prophets. I'm not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Okay, so to Jewish teachers and, and to the rabbis in the time that Jesus walked the earth, the word that we translate in English as fulfilled meant the true or correct interpretation of the scripture. Are you with me? When he said this scripture is fulfilled, and where he speaks here, and he says, I haven't come to destroy, I've come, I've come to fulfill. He's, he's not talking about it being done away with now. He's saying, I have done something here, and they understood this, that he was the true or the correct interpretation of that scripture. Get it? He didn't say, now it's, it doesn't exist anymore. He said, I am the perfect representation of the scripture. I am the fulfillment of the scripture. Yes. Amen. I'm the correct understanding, in other words, of the scripture. And where he says here, the destroy, I haven't come to destroy. The word destroy there, he's using it in a way that he, that he says, I'm not, I, I didn't come to give a false or an incorrect interpretation of this. This isn't a false or incorrect interpretation I'm giving you. That's what he's saying. He's saying, I am the exact perfect interpretation of this scripture. Okay, that's what, he's, that's what he's trying to get across here. So when Jesus used the words fulfill and destroy, he was speaking in terms that were used by the religious leaders of his time. They understood exactly what he meant. He was telling them he didn't come to do away with or to destroy or lead them astray by false teachings Instead, he fulfilled them as the person that the pictures were pointing to. All right. He, in other words, he was the human embodiment of their true meaning and spiritual reality. All right. Verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass away, one, not one jot, not one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. A jot is the Hebrew character called Yod, and it's the smallest in the Hebrew alphabet. The tittle is a tiny mark that's used to distinguish certain Hebrew letters. It'd be kind of like, not exactly, but kind of like we would use an apostrophe. It just gives meaning to that word, that it's plural, it's whatever, you know. So that's, that's what, the, what the jot and the tittle really are that Jesus is speaking about there. So Jesus is saying he honored and he fulfilled even the least of all that was written of him in the Hebrew Scripture. Right down to the smallest detail. Yes. All right. John chapter 17 and verse 5. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Verse 10. And all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. Yes. Now verse 20 through 24. Yes. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. Mm -hmm. That they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee. That they also may be one in us. That the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. I in them, thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them hast, as thou hast loved me. Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. Praise the Lord. So, just like any scripture, for that scripture to be fulfilled, we have to do the same thing Jesus did. 
See, we've been playing religious church without ever understanding what it is he's trying to get across to us. We have to become the human embodiment of their true meaning, the spiritual reality of what that scripture is saying as it refers to us, we have to fulfill the scripture. Well, you could say, praise the Lord. If Jesus hadn't come and been totally obedient to the word of God, this would all be a waste of time. Now, he writes of Christ. He said he found himself, and then he declared what that was that he found. He fulfilled the scripture. God has written us into the word of God. We know that we have more than conquerors. We are this, we are that. We have this capacity. We have this ability. But until we see ourselves there and begin to operate and fulfill the scripture rather than just reading the scripture and memorizing the scripture, but we actually start to see that's me. I fulfill that. I'm going to be the perfect interpretation of that scripture concerning man. That's what we have to do. We have to grow up and start being Christ-like. I'm not talking about being perfect. I'm talking about seeing with these spiritual eyes. When we look at the Word of God, it's no longer just words on a page. It's my bio. It's my life story. It's the rest of my story. Praise God. See, this stuff of just rehashing Everything we've ever heard is getting us nowhere but back in the hash. I mean, we're just going over and over the same ground. But God is in this last day giving us revelation for a purpose, not just so we can talk about it and tell somebody, I know something you don't know. No, so that I can be something I haven't been, amen, because he wants to declare his glory throughout the world. He wants many sons, not just Jesus. He wants all of us to be sons and daughters and operate the same way. And the only way we can do it is by fulfilling the word of God. Stop quoting it and start being it. Hallelujah. It takes risk. Just like any scripture. If it's going to be fulfilled, we've got to do the same thing Jesus did. We've got to become the human embodiment of what God is saying about us. The word has to come alive again, church. Hallelujah. The word was with God. The word was God. We were in that word before it ever was spoken. For a reason. Because we are to fulfill that word. There's a part of us that's still operating, that's still working just like Jesus. But we need to get a, a revelation of this. That this isn't just good reading material. It isn't something to put you to sleep at night. It isn't something just to calm you down when you're stressed. It's your identity. It's who you are. See, from creation, Jesus and the Father were one. The Shema. I mean, the hero of Israel, the Lord our God, is one. That has not changed, church. I mean, we can, we can debate it from now until, until Jesus comes, but the, the bottom line is they've been one all along. Amen. And Jesus prayed that we would share that same oneness. We were in Christ before the foundation of the world, so we were one. Yes. But we were separated because of the fall. Jesus comes and restores us so that we are one again. That's the point he's trying to get across to us, not just so we can have something to say, well, the Lord and I are one. No, so that we will actually begin to operate. Yes. Yes. Amen. Jesus prayed that we would share that same oneness. Yes. Think about this. This is outrageous. Yeah. I mean, we just say stuff, but we don't really think about it. We, God wants us to be one with him the same way he's one with Jesus, so there's no distinction. Only people make the distinction. God never has. Now, most of the time when I've heard this scripture, it's somebody preaching about unity in the body. But that's not really what Jesus is interested in here. His primary concern in these verses isn't unity. It's union. It's being one. It's, it's being unable to be disconnected from God. See me, see the Father. I and the Father are one. 
Hallelujah. It's about us being brought into union with our own God nature. Well, that'll make you a little nervous, but after all, that is what we got when we got born again. We got the Spirit of God. We became alive to that Spirit. We have God's nature. He says He's given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. We have the divine nature. That's just God's nature. We, he, he, he has given us His nature. The God nature is what He gave us. That and the truth of how Scripture defines us. Okay, so it's like uh, I say, and I'm just saying this. Don, you're, you're Dutch-German. I don't know what you are, but I'm just saying, okay? <laughs> and, and so you go on uh, Amazon.com, and you find the whole story, okay? Maybe not the whole story, but way more of the story, right? And that's what's happening. God, we are children of God. Now God wants to define that. Yes. Give you a clear revelation of it. Yes. Not just so we're generic. Well, yeah, I'm a child of God. So what's that mean? Yes. What is a child of God? What is, what is he really trying to say to us? Yes. That's the point of the scripture. That's what the Bible is for. Not just for us to get more information, but for us to find our identity yes. the way Jesus did and then begin to fulfill that identity in Christ. Yes. That'll shake this world up in a heartbeat because it, it has every time it's ever happened. Yes. Praise God. He wants us to know that we really are God's children. That's not just a cute way of saying it. It's who we are. That's what we are. We are made, in the old way of saying it, in the spitting image of God. Yes. Praise the Lord. But instead, we buy into what religion teaches us, what the world teaches us, and what the devil says. Yes. Yes. John 17, <clears throat> verse 22, Roberto. John 17, verse 22. See, this is the renewing of your mind that the Scripture talks about. And we've turned it into just memorizing Scripture. You know, it, it, praise the Lord. You want a new thing? God's wanting to do a new thing. It's not a new thing for him, but it's a, it's awakening. We, we, I hear everywhere now, oh, we're, we're praying for an, uh, an awakening. Thank, would to God he would just wake me up. And, I, and we'd have an awakening. If we, if we all just got awoken, awakened to, amen, the word of God, to the reality of what this thing is about, there'd be an awakening, all right. It would be a, it would be a freak show, amen, for the devil and for the world. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. All right? What is glory? In this context, it's your true nature. I mean, read it. The glory which you gave me, I've given them. What's, what's the glory Jesus had? The nature of God, the true nature of God. What did he give us? True, our true nature. Yes. Amen. That they may be one, even as we are one. Because we can't be one without that nature. All right, so the glory is to be in your true nature, to operate in the true nature of who you are and what you are. Jesus gave us the same nature that he and the Father share. Glory. Yes. So we make, we, we make it about all kinds of weird stuff when it's right there in front of our face if we just read it. Yes. All right, back to Matthew now, 5, verse 17 through 20. What Tammy was saying, and others have said it, when we just are ourselves, mm -hmm. we minister more than we ever do when we're trying. I mean, if we're just if we're really ourselves, right. operating in our true nature, aware of who we are in Christ, yep. ministry flows automatic. It, it's just what happens because God's nature is always reaching. It's always after the lost. It's always ministering love. It's always ministering grace. It's always ministering forgiveness. It's always revealing the love of God. Yes. 
Think not that I'm come to destroy the law of the prophets. I'm not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For ever, verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass away, or pass one jot or one tittle, in no wise shall pass from the law, till it be fulfilled. So, the law and the prophets are not some plan A, and then Jesus is plan B. And Jesus wasn't plan B, and then we become plan C. There's just one plan. And it's that we fill, fulfill the word of God, the scripture. This would be, this would, it would, not redundant, it would be worthless if somebody didn't live it. If Jesus had come, all, for all the word of God that they had and all the word that might come, had Jesus not found himself and then fulfilled what was written of him, it would have been for nothing. Well, guess what? We've been doing nothing for 2,000 years for the most part. Because all we've done is find him. And, of course, we've got to find him. He's on every page of this book. But we are in him. And that's one thing to have a mental assent to that, but it's a whole other thing to actually buy into it and begin to see who you are and begin to live out that reality. Yes. That was the difference between Jesus and every other prophet that had ever come. They operated in such a finite, minuscule way based on the Word of God, whereas he yeah. said, the whole thing is about me. Yeah. Everywhere you look, you're going to find me in it. Yep. Yes. Praise the Lord. God didn't scrap the law as if it were a mistake. <clears throat> Jesus is not a do-over. Jesus is the fulfillment, the perfect interpretation of the Scripture. Yes. That's what he is, first and foremost. Yes, he's a Savior, but he couldn't be the Savior if he didn't fulfill the Scripture. Right. And you will not lay hands on the sick and see him recover unless you fulfill the Scripture. You can read about it from now until Jesus shows up, but it's not, nothing's going to change until you begin to embody or fulfill that scripture and any other scripture that speaks to you. That's how it works, church. That is how it works. Jesus' message is, I am the promised one. I am the promised kept. I'm not only the promise, I'm, I'm the one that kept the promise. Yeah. Now, here's the deal, though. The promise kept issues a deeper and a wider call to us. He's the promise. Okay, that's a given. But being the promise kept then places a call upon us. Yeah. Let me show you. 1 John chapter 4, verse 17. Herein is our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because as he is, so are we in this world. A fulfillment of scripture. Otherwise, we're insignificant. We're just another religious person. He created us to be like him. Righteous. Empowered, And he did everything to make us that way. We didn't do anything to become righteous. We didn't do anything to be empowered. We just believed. But you see, unless we were righteous and empowered, there's no way we could fulfill the scripture. Jesus couldn't have done it had he not been totally obedient to the Father. Our obedience is to the faith of Jesus Christ or to the obedience of Christ. That's what our focus is on. That makes us righteous. That, that points us to our biblical reality yep. so that when we come and read this, we're not reading about somebody else who's a big giant of faith. I'm reading about me. Yes. That's right. If I will believe it, right. I can fulfill it. I can be the, I can be the translation. I can yes. be the, the full translation of that scripture, but only yes. if I'll find myself in it and do it. Yep. John 14, uh, verses 6 and 7. Labor to enter into that rest. The only work about this is to get our minds 
to quit thinking the way we've been thinking for so long and start looking at things from a, from a true God perspective. Yes. Not a better human perspective, yes. but a God perspective. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father except by me, or but by me. If ye had known me, you should have known my Father also. And from henceforth you know him and have seen him. How? By the word of God. He was the word of God. And when he lived, he lived fulfilling the word of God. And that is what caused people to see God. Not how good he was. Not how kind he was. But the fact that he was fulfilling scripture, he was embodying the word of God. Yes. And it made God real. Yes. And here he is, right here, he's doing it, right? Yes. That's what he's telling us. We have the same mandate. We have the same calling. Yes. Yes. That's the challenge. The challenge isn't how good I can be. The challenge is how, how uh, defined Will I become in agreement with that word? Will you look at the word and say, my God, he's doing, that's what the word says. I'm talking about seeing the, the sick healed, seeing the dead raised. We, we've all, see, we've all found ourselves here at one time or another, maybe out of desperation, maybe just out of sheer lack of knowing where else to turn. But God wants us to look. See, if you had that kind of confidence, if you look in here and you say, My, there it goes. Yeah. That's what I do. Yeah. Amen? Yes. That's what God is after. <clears throat> For us yes. to be a perfect translation or embodiment of this word. Yes. See, we, the hard part's been done. Yes. We don't have to be perfect. He's made us perfect that right. so that we can do this thing yes. that otherwise we couldn't do. Yes. I'm the way, the truth, and life. No man comes to the Father but by me. If you'd known me, you'd know the Father. From henceforth you know him and have seen him. Verse 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. Greater works than these shall he do, because I go to my Father. If you believe the Word, he is the Word. If you believe him, the works that he did, how did he do them? By fulfilling what the Word said. You can do these things too. And greater than these will you do, because I'm going to my Father. Praise the Lord. See, we've got to be connected. We've got to be focused on being in union with Christ. And by that, we, who we are in Christ. Because, look, we, we can talk about it all day long. We're seated at the right hand of the Father. We are seated with him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. But if we don't get this, see, we're just talking stuff. It's not real. <coughs> It's just stuff we say. Thank the Lord. Unless that's a reality for us, the best that we're going to ever hope to be is a dim shadow of everything that God wants us to be. We'll have somebody healed every once in a while, but we'll bury a lot of people. We'll get a breakthrough here financially and only to have the devil come and try to rob us in some other area. We'll, we'll, we'll get a victory here only to have a loss over here. That's not, we're supposed to be more than conquerors. That's right. That's right. So it can't be a crapshoot. This cannot be just a, let's take a shot at it and see how it works. Right. We have to de be defined by the word of God. Yes. We've got to see that that's me and that's what I do. Yes. Then I'll let God worry about the outcome. I don't have to worry about all I got to do. All I got to do is find myself and then live from that reality. And that's exactly what Jesus did. He went to his own people, to his own hometown where everybody knew him and could do no mighty miracles. Didn't say he didn't do any mighty miracles. Said he couldn't do any. He knew who he was. 
but they didn't. They thought he was still the kid. That's why a prophet is never accepted in his own. Try prophesying in your, to your wife sometime. <laughs> Praise the Lord when things aren't going that well. Amen. Okay, sometimes they buy it. Sometimes it's just, you know, that's the same jerk that said whatever. You know, it's hard. Familiarity breeds contempt. But we cannot let that stop us from being the def definition of the word. Defining what the scripture is saying about us. Praise the Lord. Praise God. We were created for God's presence. And apart from that, we're never going to expose our full weight, our full glory, our true nature. You can't do it. You can only just be a better human. But you can never be truly God's child without being letting the word of God define that. Doesn't mean you can't be saved. Doesn't mean you can't go to heaven. It just means you'll never operate in the power of the Holy Spirit the way Jesus did until you start doing what Jesus did. Finding yourself. Not just finding a scripture and then repeating it a hundred times. There's nothing wrong with speaking the word, and I, I'm all about that. But if it doesn't change anything internal in you, if it doesn't cause you to realize this is, I'm just doing what my father does, then you're just talking. Praise the Lord. Every time we have a need, every time there's a, a situation, something confronts us, we need to... See, Jesus knew the word so well. He didn't have to run back and get the, the, the scroll. He's confronted with a, an obstacle. He's confronted with an attack of the devil immediately by the word of God. He knew what it was he was up against. And so he didn't try to build up a bunch of strength in himself. He'd just say what the word said. He'd just define that word. He'd make it him. Here's, here's the deal. We, we laugh about this a lot of times when we talk about, if you, you know, if, if God uh, expected us to never fail or to never sin or to do anything wrong or if that would then disqualify us for heaven, he would have killed us as soon as we come out of the water or as soon as we made our confession of faith. Would have been the fairest and most decent thing he could do for us. But that's not why he got us saved. It's a bit of it. I mean, it's a part of it. It's a, it's a blessing of salvation. But we were, we were saved. We were born again. We became new creatures. We had this new nature. And he put us here to release that glory. Yes. To reveal your nature. Because it's the only thing that will prove God. Everything else is speculation. I'm talking about to the unbeliever. And sadly, even to many religious people. What did Jesus come here to do? To reveal the glory or to reveal the nature of God. He said he has given us the same call. We are to continue that call. Find yourself. Embody it. And watch people come to Christ. Amen. Watch miracles happen. Because that's how they happen. Amen. We have to fulfill Scripture. Amen. Just like there wasn't a plan B, there isn't a plan C. Same plan has been in effect from day one. Reveal the Lord. Reveal the glory of God. Show Humanity, its true nature, yep. what, it, what, what the possibilities, what the potential are for a child of God. Yep. Nothing about that has changed. Things just got fulfilled. Amen. Now, I think about this even in this way. When the fullness of time came, mm -hmm. we think in, in our minds, we're thinking linear, we're, we're thinking timelines. But I'm thinking more and more, when the fullness of time comes, the fullness of time is when I fulfill the scripture. Somebody, everywhere, all along the road, 
as scripture, as prophetic words were being fulfilled, what happened? Somebody fulfilled the word of God. Somebody became whatever that prophecy was. And it became fulfilled. It became correct according to the scripture. And we're all, we're looking and thinking, you know, someday the fullness of time, this will happen, that will happen. No, what will happen is somebody will go, whoa, wait a minute, that's me. I, I'm, that's who he's talking to. He's talking to me. He's not talking to brother so-and-so that is that prays eight hours a day and I only pray 15 minutes, you know, when I can or I'm just talking to the Lord. I don't have this dedicated thing. See what I'm saying? I would guess that in every generation, there are probably a million timelines that are possible. Potentially, prophetic things could be fulfilled. But it's only when somebody finds them. I mean, I mean, even think about, I know I'm getting off on a tangent here, but, but uh, at the end of World War I, and the British were occupying Palestine, what, what we know to be Israel today. And this general rides up to the gate and will not ride through the gate because he knows he found himself in the scripture. I'm here to bring Israel back to their homeland. But that gate is for Jesus Christ. So he gets off and he walks in. And over and over you read historic accounts of people who found themselves and said, wait a minute. I'm in a position that I can do this. He's talking to me. I went about Harry Truman when nobody wanted to side with Israel at the end of World War II. And Harry Truman recognized, one of the first, if not the first, to recognize Israel as a nation. That's prophetic. He didn't have to do it, and he risked a lot by doing it, politically speaking. But he did it because his mama read the Bible to him when he was a kid. Yeah. He knew what the word said. Yes. And so that day, that scripture was fulfilled in him. Yes. Yes. I'm saying it happens over and over and over. You can find it, you know, I mean, it just, it just all it takes is us to look differently, look at it differently. Because God's not a respectable person. He just sees you be the one to fulfill that prophetic word as anybody else. Right. It's just you got to go. That's Karen. Yeah. Leave all do it. Yeah. Amen. Amen. This day, yes. this word will be fulfilled. Yes. See, the world needs you. It does. You're not just random here. You could be, if, if you would take this seriously, you could be the answer to everything. Me? Well, you heard the word that was spoken to Don. Is it any harder to believe that you might be the catalyst for some great move of God or for some great healing deliverance? Some, you know, who knows what? If we find ourselves here, yes. and we know there's a last day church that's going to do this, yes. why not us? Yes. Why not make it us, you know? Right. And likewise for us individually. Right. That's the difference between Jesus. Yes, you say, well, yeah, but Jesus had a, you know, he had an immaculate conception. So did you. You were born again. Yes. Come on, get past that. You have, you are the... He was the firstborn of many brethren. You have a, an immaculate conception. God created you. You were born from above. Yes. 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 Praise God. Romans 8, uh, verse 17 to 21. See, I think God always wants to challenge us. You know, we... we and this isn't a question of intellectual, you know dalliance, if you will. 
it's really, it's quite simple. The, 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 the more you look at it literal, instead of trying to make it complicated, the simpler it becomes. It's just that we've got so much religious baggage and, and, and denominational stuff wrapped up in all this, it's hard for us to see the forest for the trees sometimes. If children, then heirs. Heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him. Joint heirs. Now get that. Joint heirs. That means you're an equal. You're not a lesser heir. It's not like he got all the cream of the crop and, you know, the big house and you got a little bit of something on the side. Y'all are the same. Praise the Lord. So if so be that we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. That suffering is not you being crucified. That suffering is in this world. You will have tribulation. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. That glory. What is that glory? Our true nature revealed. For the earnest expectation of the creature waits for the manifestation of the sons of God. Waiting for our true nature to be revealed so that they can be delivered. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willing. Vanity is just you know self-consciousness and self-awareness and self-focus, not willingly, but by reason of him who has subjected the same in hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption under the glorious liberty of the children of God. Amen. Praise God. We are part of God's plan to free all of creation yes. from the bondage and decay that sin caused. Yes. Amen. Yes. That's why we're here. Amen. It's just not about getting a bigger car. And I'm not, I know, listen, I'm, I'm, look, when we need things, I pray about it. I, I believe God for it. And we, that's how we live. And there's stuff that we need. And God wants to give us more than just what we need. He wants to give us abundance. He wants to give us enough so that we can be a blessing as well as be blessed. So I'm not against any of that. I'm not, I'm not against God prospering his people because it's the word of God. But that's not, that's the side benefit. That's the, that's the, you know, that's the good stuff on the side. The reality is we are. And if we are, this reality, all the other stuff gets added. Jesus went about preaching the kingdom of God. What is the kingdom of God? Well, everybody operates under the kingdom principles. What are the kingdom principles? The word of God. Well, we know that can't be a reality for, for the most of the religious world because everybody's got their own thing. Nobody's being a literal translation of the word of God. Everybody's just got their own interpretation and they just sit back and deal with that. And every once in a while, somebody will come along who actually finds themselves in here and all of a sudden, we want to elevate them to a saint status or, or, or some kind of mini-God. When in fact, it's every one of us have that potential, and we've just relegated it to a handful of people who have said, hey, I think I'll give it a shot. Right. Praise the Lord. Romans chapter 8. Uh, verse 19. I'm going to hurry up here because we're getting close to noon. I want to I don't want to keep you late. But Romans uh, 8, verse 19 says, The earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. So the whole creation is out here on the edge of its seat waiting for us to find ourselves so that they can be set free. So that it can be set free. Verse 29 and 30, same chapter, Romans 8, 29 and 30. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Whom he did know, foreknew, he knew us, we were in Christ before the foundation of the world. He predestinated those whom he knew, foreknew, to be conformed to the image of his son. Now, wait a minute. Uh -huh. 
what's the image of his son? Human? No. He's one with God. The image is the glory. It's our oneness, our unity, our uni unison with God. That he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Supernatural. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. That's us. Whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also gave their true nature. His nature. He glorified. In Christ, we can fulfill all scripture. Only in Christ can we fulfill scripture. But in Christ, we can fulfill all scripture. Let me just show you one brief example. And I know this, you may think this is a stretch, but listen, everything in this Bible is trying to tell us something about Jesus Christ and us in him, yes. how we are to operate. So go to, uh, the story of Gideon is in Judges, Judges uh, chapter 6, and we'll just read a couple of scriptures there just to give you a, a, an overview here. Judges chapter 6, verse 12. The angel of the Lord appeared unto him, unto Gideon, and he said unto him, The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. Ever hear that? And look over your shoulder to see who he's talking to. Praise the Lord. That was the deal here. So he's, the angel of the Lord appears to Gideon and he says to him, The Lord's with you, you mighty man of valor. This mighty man of valor is hiding in, in a wine press, threshing wheat because he's scared to death of all the enemies out there that are going to steal his stuff and him and kill him and whoever knows what. So he's paranoid. He's a coward. And the angel comes to him while he's cowering in this little place and says, Ooh, the Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. How many of you know that's the word of God? Yes. But unless he wants to be the interpretation or the translation, the perfect translation, that nothing's going to happen. God's going to go have to find him another coward. Now, I'm serious. All right, look at... Look at uh, uh, chapter 7, verses 19 20 now. Now, Gideon has begun over a period of time to actually believe what the Word of God is saying to him. Even though he's trying to make excuses for why he shouldn't and why it can't make sense, ultimately he just, just throws up his hands and says, okay, it's the Word of God, I'm going to fulfill it. So Gideon and the hundred men that were with him came into the outside of the camp in the beginning of the middle watch, and they had but newly set the watch, and they blew the trumpets and break the pitchers that were in their hands. How many of you know the story? They put a candle or they put a light inside the pitcher. They blew a trumpet. This is what the word of the Lord told them to do. Blow the trumpets, break the pitchers, and the lights will come on. All right, for us, you're never going to know what's inside you unless you're willing to break this clay vessel. Unless you get beyond this, you're never really going to know what's inside you, and neither will anybody else. This earthly vessel is not our reality. It's just our vehicle. It's just carrying the light of the word. It's just carrying the light of the spirit. It's carrying the truth of who we are in Christ. And when that happens, that's when fulfillment flows. That's when the word of God gets out and really begins to function the way it's intended to function. You know, look what he says. The sword of the Lord. What is the sword of the Lord? The word of God. He, doesn't he say, and out of his mouth came a two-edged sword? The word of God. That's what he said. The sword of the Lord, or the word of God in Gideon just did this. Woo, hallelujah. That makes me want to shout. I mean, come on. We could say and greater, he they lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. And you can just say the sword of the Lord and Nathan. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. The word of God, and he found himself in it and was obedient to it, and look what happened. Yes. Miracle. Yes. Oh, Ooh, took 10,000 people, just sick, sent them home. Yep. I only need, all I need is one who will translate this yes. perfectly who will fulfill the word that I'm given. And nothing will be impossible. Oh, man, I'm telling you, I, that just makes me want to... 
Slap the devil. Praise God. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. See, I'm not just saying, I'm not trying to find something different to talk about. I I want this. I want the reality of it. And this makes sense. This makes biblical sense. This this resonates with my spirit. Now, unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. Hallelujah. See, we've got to do as Jesus did. We've got to fulfill the scriptures that are speaking to us, that are speaking about us. We've got to be the human embodiment of the true meaning of the spiritual reality of the scriptures that speak to us as human beings. And they shall go forth, and they shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. They shall cast out demons. They'll do this. They'll do that. Nothing shall harm you. No weapon formed against you can prosper. Every tongue that rises in judgment against you, you condemn. You'll be the head, not the tail. You, see, we've got to. If we're not going to do this, we just go down and join the why. Because we'll have as much accomplished by getting together with a bunch of other people as we do here. Oh, yeah, I mean, it feels good to worship, and, and obviously that's a good thing. Because, we, if, But, look, we leave here, and we're just in the same mess we were in before we got here. Yeah. Feel good as long as we're in the confines, as long as we're in this comfort zone. But we got to go out there and live in a world that's full of crap, yes. that's full of the devil and people yes. who don't know God, who yes. desperately need God, whom God loves. Yes. Oh. Somebody's got to find themselves in here yes. and start doing Jesus. Instead of Methodism, instead of Pentecostalism, instead of, you know. I'm not against anything that, that brings people closer to God, but I'm saying at some point we've got to start doing what Jesus called us to do. We've got to start using this word as a weapon and not just a history book. Praise God. Praise the Lord. I'm telling you that this this is spiritual reality. It's not pie in the sky. It's not hope for some day off in the millennium. This is spiritual reality for today for anyone who will receive it. If you'll be more than a hearer and actually be a fulfiller of the word. That's what he's talking about, a doer of the word. He's talking about somebody who will read it, say, that's me. Has to be. I'm a child of God. He created me for this. So here's what the Lord is saying to me. Be the true, correct interpretation of Scripture. Find yourself as God defines you. Without spot, without wrinkle. Mighty men and women of God. Nothing is impossible for you. One will come at you. Seven will flee. One will put a thousand to flight. Two will put ten thousand to flight. Don't destroy scripture. In other words, don't give it a false or incorrect interpretation that it's about somebody else. This is for, you know, the big shot that, you know, got 10,000 people in the church somewhere. This is for every born again child of God. Maybe more so. Because God, there's no question about who gets the glory then. Amen. All right. Matthew 5, 13 through 18. We'll wrap up here. Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 through 18. Okay, so you, 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 you know, maybe you're having a little trouble swallowing this pill. Well, go home and get a bottle of Chianti or something. <laughs> It'll help. Now, I'm just saying, meditate. Yes. Think about it. Pray about it. Let God talk to you personally about it. Maybe he'll give you something to make it clearer or or more palatable or understandable or whatever. I'm just sharing what I feel like God is saying to me, and I I believe it. I'm just telling you, I believe it. Praise the Lord. We are the salt of the earth. But if the salt has lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? 
It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and be trodden under foot of men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel. This thing's got to get out. We've got to break that vessel. Amen. Unto all that are in the house, a, can, a bushel on a candlestick, and it given light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Yes. Praise the Lord. Think not that I'm come to destroy the law of the prophets. I'm not come to destroy, but to fulfill. See, this is a continuation of that, what he was talking about. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass away, not one jot or one tittle in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. Somebody's going to fulfill. That's, just, that's all there is to it. it somebody's going to. I can do all things. Nothing is impossible to me. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. I lay hands on the sick and they recover. As he is, so am I in this world. Luke 4, 19 to 21, and we'll wrap up. We're done. Luke 4, verses 19 through 21. See, I think God challenges us. Mentally, emotionally, spiritually, in every area of life. To the degree that we're willing to be challenged is the degree to, that, we'll, that we'll receive. I mean, as far as you're willing to go is how far he'll take you. So to preach the acceptable year of the Lord, this is Jesus again speaking. He closes the book where he found himself, by the way. He went to Isaiah 61 in the scrolls and he started reading about himself. Amen. Now listen, he, ha he just believed it. Yes. He was operating by faith. Yes. And he, he said that he preached the, uh, the acceptable year of the Lord, and he closed the book, and he gave it to the, to the minister and sat down, and the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. Why? Because they're thinking, well, who does this? Never seen this. Never heard of this kind of thing before. He's saying this is about him. And he began to say unto them, this day... This scripture is fulfilled in your ears. See, today is the day of salvation. The day of sozo is what that word actually is, which means today is the day you're made whole. I mean, you can do this. You find yourself here, and you do what it says you do, People are going to look on you like, what yes. in the heck is that? Exactly. That don't look like church. Yeah. No, it looks like the Father. Yes. It looks like something God would do. Yes. Some will embrace you. Some will rush to you. Yeah. Some will throw stones at you. Yeah. Some of them will hate you. Yeah. But I'll tell you what. They, they wanted to throw him off a cliff, and he just disappeared showed up someplace else. You know why? Because it was written. Yep. Praise the Lord. So I'm just closing. Fulfill the scriptures. Fulfill your destiny. Fulfill your glory. Your true nature. And it will be joy unspeakable and full of glory. It'll be a life like we've only imagined in some fairy tale kind of way. But this is what God wants for each and every one of us. To be like his son. Find yourself in the word of God. And then be it. Praise the Lord. Spit in the devil's eye. It is written. And he'll flee. Praise the Lord. And people will come to know the Lord and behold his glory, his true nature. And where will they do that? Wherever you are, wherever you're operating as a translation, as a perfect interpretation of the word.
God will be revealed. Yes. His glory will be released. His true nature will be released and people will say, well, that's how God is. I think I'll try him. Yeah. Amen. Give him a hand clap this morning. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I just, I just believe God is challenging us and saying, okay, you're, you're talking this, you want a new thing. You, 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 you believe that I can do all things. Very often God will come right back and say, okay, then show me. And I believe that's what the Lord is just saying. You want it? I more than want yes. to give it to you. Just take a step of faith. Just get out of the boat. Just start seeing yourself here. And start being who you really are. And he'll be more than you ever dreamed he could be. Amen. God bless all of you. Appreciate your time your patience this morning. Go in the power of his might. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. You're dismissed. Alvin? We do. Praise the Lord. Point him to you. Amen. Amen. Okay. You got it? Go in the power of his might. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. Have a great week. Be a fulfillment.